When we look back at American agricultural history, few machines transform farming like the combine harvester. These remarkable machines revolutionized grain harvesting by combining reaping, threshing, and winnowing into a single efficient process. From horse-drawn beginnings to today's autonomous giants, combines represent one of our greatest agricultural achievements. Not just farm implements, but mechanical marvels that made modern food production possible while freeing countless workers from grueling manual labor. When Benjamin Holt's company introduced its massive harvesting machine in California's San Joaquin Valley in the early 1890s, it represented a seismic shift in grain farming. Pulled by as many as 20 to 30 horses or mules arranged in a wide hitch, this towering machine was among the first to successfully combine cutting, threshing, and cleaning grain in a single pass across the field. What made Holt's Harvester so revolutionary was its scale and synchronization. With a cutting width of up to 14 feet, impressive for its time, it featured a front-mounted header, a threshing cylinder, and a cleaning system that worked in precise harmony. At the core was a clever ground-driven mechanism. As the massive iron wheels turned, they powered the machine's internal components through a system of gears, chains, and belts. No external engine was required, just horsepower in the truest sense. In 1938, Massey Harris unveiled a machine that fulfilled a long-held dream on American farms, the first commercially successful self-propelled combine harvester. The number 20 SP wasn't just an upgrade, it was a complete rethinking of how grain could be harvested. With the header mounted at the front and the engine built into the machine, it eliminated the need for a separate tractor altogether. What truly set the number 20 apart was its layout. The operator sat high above the header with a full view of the crop and cutting height, something no pole-type combine could offer. This visibility, combined with easy access to controls, gave farmers real-time command over the harvesting process. The number 20 SP was powered by a Chrysler Flathead six-cylinder industrial engine, delivering the kind of consistent horsepower, typically around 45 to 50 horsepower, needed to handle varied terrain and heavy yields without relying on ground speed. During the labor shortages of World War II, a single operator on a Massey Harris SP could do the work of an entire crew using traditional equipment. The number 20 laid the foundation for nearly all self-propelled combines that followed. Its basic architecture, front-mounted header, mid-body threshing, and rear engine became the standard blueprint still used in modern machines. It was a bold step forward, and one that helped shape the future of mechanized farming. The International Harvester Model 141 represents one of agriculture's most significant yet underappreciated milestones. Introduced in 1954 as a prototype, it carried the blueprint for what would eventually reshape the combine industry. Inside its unassuming frame was a revolutionary axial flow threshing system that reimagined how grain could be separated more gently and efficiently. While traditional combines relied on a cylinder and concave system paired with straw walkers, a setup that had barely changed since the 19th century, IH engineers took a radical new approach. They positioned a large rotating rotor parallel to the direction of crop flow creating a spiral threshing path that used centrifugal force rather than brute impact. This reduced grain damage while dramatically improving throughput. Field tests proved its value, especially for delicate crops like soybeans and edible beans, where gentle handling mattered. The axial flow design offered significantly higher capacity and cleaner separation compared to conventional designs. Despite its promise, the Model 141 was a machine ahead of its time. The manufacturing technology of the 1950s couldn't yet produce its precision components affordably, and farmers were hesitant to embrace such a dramatic shift. IH ultimately shelved the prototype, but quietly continued development behind the scenes. That work paid off in 1977, with the introduction of the Axial Flow 1460, the first commercially available rotary combine. Its success changed harvesting forever. Competing brands were forced to develop rotary models of their own, and today, nearly all high-capacity combines use some form of axial flow design. It all started with a bold experiment in 1954. The John Deere Model 55 debuted in 1947 during a post-war agricultural boom, offering an innovation that reshaped multi-crop harvesting, an interchangeable header system that drastically reduced the time and effort needed to switch crops. 
While this flexibility may seem standard today, at the time it marked a major leap forward in on-farm efficiency. Before the 55, changing headers often meant hours of disassembly and specialized tools. John Deere engineers developed a more modular system that allowed one person to switch header configurations in under an hour, a remarkable achievement that gave farmers the ability to adapt quickly between crops and fields. The practical impact was enormous. A farmer could harvest wheat in the morning, switch to soybeans in the afternoon, and move on to another field by evening, something unheard of before. The Model 55's well-balanced design, including its side-mounted engine, also allowed it to perform in soft or uneven terrain where competitors often bogged down. Other innovations included a variable-speed cylinder drive that gave operators precise control over threshing speed, a critical feature for preserving grain quality across different crop types. And while its enclosed cab wasn't yet pressurized by modern standards, it offered improved protection and was an early nod to operator comfort and safety. Perhaps the most telling sign of its success was its longevity. With only modest updates, the Model 55 remained in production for 15 years, an unusually long run in an industry defined by rapid evolution. Its core principles, versatility, modularity, and user-centered design remain part of John Deere's DNA even decades later. Oh, and real quick, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. Nearly a century ago, the Gleaner Baldwin Model A emerged as one of the most influential designs in combine harvester history. Introduced in 1923 by the Baldwin Brothers of Kansas, this groundbreaking machine challenged the conventions of the time with its fully riveted steel construction, a bold departure from the heavy wood frame combines that dominated the market. Prior to the Model A, most combines were built with bulky wooden frames reinforced with iron making them heavy, weather-prone, and difficult to maneuver. The Baldwin brothers took a different approach, constructing their machine entirely from lightweight pressed steel. This not only improved durability and weather resistance, but dramatically reduced the machine's weight, making it ideal for the softer soils of the Midwest and Eastern states. The Model A's compact footprint made it a practical choice for smaller farms, extending the harvest season in conditions that would bog down larger machines. Its simplified crop flow, known as the straight-through design, allowed grain to travel in a direct path from the cutter bar to the grain tank. This reduced power consumption, minimized grain damage, and improved overall efficiency. One of the Model A's defining features was its auger-based grain handling system, which delivered crops smoothly through the machine and into the tank. This efficient transfer method influenced cleaner combines for decades and became a hallmark of the brand's design. Beyond its technical innovations, the Model A helped democratize mechanical harvesting. It gave smaller farms access to combine technology at a time when large, traveling harvest crews were still the norm. Its success proved that lighter, more specialized machines could compete with and often outperform larger, more cumbersome equipment. That idea still echoes through agricultural engineering a hundred years later. In the early 1950s, Alice Chalmers made a major leap forward with the release of their all-crop SP-100, the first self-propelled combine in their highly respected all-crop series. Arriving at a time of rapid mechanization across American farms, the SP-100 introduced features that would set new standards for operator control and harvesting efficiency. One of its key innovations was a hydraulic control system that allowed operators to adjust reel height and position from the seat something that had previously required manual adjustment during operation. This upgrade didn't just boost productivity, it made the process safer and far more manageable for solo operators. Another major advancement was its belt-driven unloading auger, which allowed the machine to transfer grain to a wagon or truck while continuing to harvest. Prior designs often required stopping to unload, creating delays during critical harvest windows. With the SP-100, continuous harvesting became possible, significantly increasing daily capacity. Alice Chalmers engineers also developed an improved air cleaning system that used directed airflow to separate grain from chaff more efficiently, resulting in cleaner grain with fewer losses, even in dusty or humid conditions. The SP-100's modular construction made it especially easy to maintain. Key components were accessible and designed for quick servicing, reducing downtime and reflecting Alice Chalmers' emphasis on practical field use. Though not as widely remembered today as some of its contemporaries, 
the SP-100 helped establish new expectations for what a self-propelled combine could do. Its innovations in hydraulic controls, unloading systems, and serviceability influenced combine designs for decades to come, and many of those features remain standard on modern harvesters. The mid-1970s were a turning point in combine technology, and in 1975, New Holland introduced a machine that redefined the game, the TR-70. As the world's first production twin-rotor combine, it broke sharply from tradition and introduced a new way to think about threshing and separation. At the heart of the TR-70 were two longitudinal rotors operating side by side. This parallel rotor layout extended the threshing path and provided a gentler, more consistent process, greatly reducing grain damage compared to conventional systems. That made a big difference for crops like soybeans and edible beans, where crack kernels could mean lower market value. The twin rotor system also gave the TR-70 an edge in uneven conditions. When one rotor encountered a heavier crop load, the system naturally balanced the material between both rotors. This reduced slugging and kept the crop flowing smoothly, making the TR-70 far more forgiving in variable field conditions. New Holland engineers further improved grain recovery with a specialized concave design that worked efficiently with twin rotors. The layout reduced power requirements while maximizing separation, an important advancement during the fuel-conscious era of the 1970s. The TR-70 significance went beyond engineering. Its success forced other manufacturers to rethink their own designs and help drive the broader shift from conventional walker combines to rotary machines. While others eventually adopted single-rotor designs, New Holland's twin-rotor system became a defining feature, and it's still what sets their combines apart to this day. When the John Deere 8820 Titan II rolled onto fields in 1985, it marked a turning point in combine evolution ushering in the early days of digital agriculture. While most competitors were focused on purely mechanical upgrades, John Deere took a bold step forward by integrating onboard computer technology into the heart of the harvesting process. The key innovation was Harvest Track, a grain loss monitoring system that used sensors positioned throughout the machine to track threshing performance and cleaning efficiency in real time. Instead of relying on instinct and guesswork, operators could now make in-field adjustments based on accurate data, often recovering several additional bushels per acre with no added input. The system's grain loss sensors were especially transformative. They detected when grain was escaping with crop residue and alerted the operator immediately, helping fine-tune settings for maximum efficiency. While modest by modern standards, Harvest Track was a major step toward precision harvesting and it gave the 8820 a clear edge in performance and profitability. Mechanically, the Titan II also delivered. It featured a high inertia cylinder that maintained consistent threshing under varying crop loads, and a pressurized cleaning system that improved separation in high moisture or heavy residue conditions. These upgrades made it one of the most advanced machines of its time. The impact of the 8820 went well beyond its years of production. Harvest Track laid the foundation for the digital tools we now take for granted yield monitors, GPS mapping, automated adjustment systems, and telematics that connect machines to cloud based farm management platforms. In many ways, today's data driven agriculture began with this forward thinking machine from 1985. By the late 1990s, Case IH had already revolutionized harvesting with its axial flow rotary design. But the 2388 introduced in 1998 took the concept to the next level. With simplified mechanics, outstanding serviceability, and real-world reliability, it quickly became a favorite among farmers who valued uptime as much as capacity. One of the 2388's standout features was its streamlined design. Engineers eliminated dozens of moving parts by replacing traditional belt and chain systems with direct hydraulic drives. Fewer bearings, fewer adjustments, and fewer wear points translated to faster daily maintenance and less downtime during the heart of harvest season. The combine also introduced a modular approach to servicing. Key components like the concave could be removed in under 30 minutes, tasks that previously took hours or even required dealership service. Swing-out panels gave direct access to the rotor drive system without disassembling nearby assemblies, turning major repairs into manageable field jobs. 
For many farmers, that meant the difference between losing a day and losing a week. Technology-wise, the 2388 featured Case IH's Advanced Farming Systems, or AFS, which paired onboard yield monitoring with early GPS integration. This allowed operators to generate field maps showing productivity variations, essential data for the rising field of precision agriculture. With it, farmers could identify yield-impacting issues like poor drainage, soil compaction, or nutrient deficiencies. Operator experience was also a priority. The 2388's control center offered intuitive controls, excellent visibility, and an ergonomic layout that made long harvest days more productive and less exhausting. The Case IH 2388 didn't just build on the rotary legacy. It defined what a modern combine should be. Simple, reliable, and built for the realities of farming. Its influence is still seen today in mid-sized combines across every major brand. American agriculture took a major step forward around 2011 when European manufacturer CLAAS introduced the Lexion 760 Terra Track, or TT, to US farms. While Class had long been a leader in global combine innovation, the 760 TT marked the beginning of their full influence on North American harvests, with a machine designed to reduce compaction and maximize performance in tough field conditions. Its most visible innovation was the Advanced Terra Track System, a rubber track drive that spread the machine's weight over a larger footprint than conventional wheels. Unlike earlier track systems, the 760 TT maintained consistent ground contact even while turning, dramatically reducing soil disturbance. The system lowered ground pressure by up to 66%, helping preserve soil structure, improve water infiltration, and protect future yields. At the heart of the combine was a unique hybrid threshing system. Initial threshing occurred through a tangential cylinder and concave, much like conventional combines, but partially threshed material was then transferred to twin longitudinal rotors for final separation. This dual-stage design delivered outstanding capacity and gentle grain handling, especially in high-moisture or green-stem crops where single-system machines often struggled. Adding to its innovation was the CMOS automatic system, which monitored real-time crop and machine conditions to automatically adjust settings like rotor speed, concave clearance, and fan speed. By continuously fine-tuning performance, CMOS reduced operator fatigue and ensured consistent results, even for less experienced operators. The Lexion 760 TT's arrival represented more than just new features. It marked a shift in combine philosophy. Class brought a European approach focused on soil health, intelligent automation, and overall harvesting efficiency, and American farmers responded showing that innovation, no matter where it comes from, has a place on U.S. soil.